many years, I assumed that theater and science were just two disconnected and distinct elements of my life. A weird personality quirk that was good for interview banter. But then, over the summer, as I was overseas in England, miserably sleep deprived and very much in my own head, I attended a performance of As You Like It by the Royal Shakespeare Company and something clicked. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. Sure, the roles of actress and scientist are some of my many parts, but as I reflected, I realized that my life in the theater has made me a better scientist. In turn, science has made me an analytical actress. These two parts were no longer disconnected, and in truth, they never really were. Theater teaches you how to take risks and mistakes and grow from them. Theater improves communication and shows you how to observe and incorporate new skills, all of which are crucial threads for being successful in science. When I'm in a show, I get weirdly obsessive about my character, which isn't particularly unique. Most actors are. However, the bulk of high school and college actors are more likely to mimic an accent than spend literal hours researching accent mechanics. I blame 13-year-old me for falling in love with reading scientific papers. I find the challenge of puzzling out technical jargon I don't understand soothing. My love of the technical means I get rather intimate with accents, from finding the particulars of placement in my mouth to shaping the vowels and consonants just so. This gives me the advantage of being able to apply an accent to a phrase I've yet to encounter in my listening. The scientist in me knows that I have a myriad of tools at my disposal, so I don't just care about the regional specificity of an accent, no, historical accuracy matters to me too. Why else would I deep dive into the international dialects of English archive looking for a North Carolinian accent from someone born in the late 1920s? Hair and makeup aren't safe from my insistence to research either. I spend hours poring over photos and records of the fashion of the period I'll be portraying spending days upon days getting my hair to do exactly what I want and making sure my lip color is as period accurate as it can be. Heck, in one show, I suffered chemical burns for the sake of attempting to age myself. <laughs> Science has given me a unique and studious ownership of my art. The same show that gave me chemical burns was the one where I learned the most about risk-taking and growing from my mistakes. I was lucky enough to play Clary in Steel Magnolias with Marshall University Theater Department. But this story isn't about me. It's about my friend Eliza, who played Anel. She is an excellent risk taker. She understands that rehearsal is a place to experiment because the stakes are low, namely embarrassment. We were early in rehearsing when she decided to take a risk. She let us know before rehearsal that she had a surprise and that it was going to be hysterical, certain that the choice would carry into the show. We start at the top of the show with her spraying Truby's hair, and Eliza has the first line. Oops, I see a hole. To be fair, the lisp was hysterical. We were all laughing, and when she said, it's a little poofier than I normally do, but I'm nervous, she lost it too. <laughs> and we couldn't stop laughing. It was at that point that it was decided that maybe the lisp wasn't the right choice for her now. Eliza took the note, and we moved on. But during a break, our director, Leah Turley, decided to talk about the choice of a lisp. She asked us what it told us about Anel. That one choice ended up teaching Eliza, and all of us, much more about the character than we, we would have known without that choice. That choice, which could be called a mistake, ended up shaping the final product in a meaningful way. I've started to view my wrists in the lab similarly to how I view my wrists in theater. However, the stakes aren't being embarrassed, but rather the loss of incredibly expensive supplies and valuable time. I now take calculated risks in manipulating experiments, letting the data tell its own story, and then asking what lessons I can learn from the result, good or bad. Because of theater, I am less afraid of making mistakes in the lab, and I've learned just how useful a mistake can be in building a better understanding. Growing up, science fairs were my bread and butter. Admittedly, my first few projects barely contained any science at all, but as an enterprising child, I didn't particularly care. In time, I started to do well at science fairs as both my projects and presentations got better, something that both my mom and I chalked up to my charisma, a trait that I've gained through theater. I've come a long way from my first show where I cried every rehearsal. After all, how else would I be up here? 
but charisma alone won't carry you through. Live theater and technical difficulties taught me the necessity of knowing my character well enough to improvise under pressure, something that came in very handy under scientific pressure. My high school senior year project managed to garner the attention of the International Science and Engineering Fair Review Board, which meant I had done something wrong. I joined a panel I joined a Zoom call where a panel of scientists informed me that my procedures and other safety paperwork were missing. I assured them that I had submitted them, and while the panel did find them during the call, I, without thinking, offered to present the material live. Theater to the rescue. I knew this information well, and by golly, did I rely on my ability to read an audience and use information to create a story. At the end of the meeting, the panel thanked me for a thorough and clear explanation and I took a huge sigh of relief. The skill of improvisation picked up from one too many mishaps on stage saved me. Effective communication is knowing your material well enough to perform under pressure while still connecting with an audience and recognizing when you need to slow it down. The most crucial thing that theater has taught me is phrased best by one of my previous directors, Fulton Burns. Steal from others and make it your own. When I was young, I didn't have that particular phrase, but I knew the concept. The bulk of my theatrical training hasn't come from classes, but from sitting in rehearsal. I discovered early on what a joy it is to watch and learn. The habits and tricks of other actors in the rehearsal room get incorporated into my schema of theater, my actress's toolkit. For example, how I carry myself, the way I move when I dance, I can trace back to watching a lovely woman named Nicole, my castmate in a production of Joseph in the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, I was in at age 10. And this practice of observation and incorporation bled naturally into science. When working on that senior year project, I found myself in a predicament. I was collecting water samples from hot springs and attempting to culture bacteria from them, but I wasn't quite sure how to go about it. After reading a paper from our Turkish group collecting samples from hot springs to get bacterial cultures, albeit for a different reason than me, I went, aha! On site, they put samples on growth plates and took water samples back with them, keeping both in a portable incubator. And while I absolutely thought about trying to jimmy rig an egg incubator to work in my Jeep, I ended up with a Yeti cooler filled with hot bean bags that kept my samples warm. Did my Jeep smell like beans for a week? Yes. Did it give me excellent bacterial cultures? Yes! Because of theater, I can observe and incorporate techniques from papers and lab courses and incorporate them seamlessly into my lab work. Stealing from others and making it your own, with proper citations, of course, is a crucial skill for building my scientist toolkit. I've been doing theater and science simultaneously for 13 years now. This is a trend that has held for many science projects and shows throughout elementary, middle, and high school, and continues today as I work in the culling lab and consort with the theater department. <laughs> sure, that means some insane days, like when I presented my project on the same day as a dress rehearsal, which also fell on my birthday. But I wouldn't change it for the world. From science making me a maniacally analytical actress to theater making me a charismatically adaptive scientist, I take calculated risks and grow from my mistakes. I effectively communicate my ideas to others either in my lab or outside of it. And I observe and incorporate skills and coursework from papers. I am certain I would not be where I am today without the equal influence of theater and science in my life. And I think that if more scientists take a leap of faith and try theater, be it a class or auditioning for a show, they too would become better scientists. Four, all the world's a lab, and we are merely scientists in it. Thank you.